All right, let me get right to our VIP line after having made my guest sit through all of that nonsense. But I bet Paul Siegert is now thinking of a pun involving Quack himself. Paul is a managing partner at PCS Advisors. They're a healthcare consulting firm. They've got clients and offices around the country. And we're going to talk about giant firms moving into healthcare or moving deeper into healthcare. Paul, welcome to KOA. Thanks for having me. So before we talk about what everything means for consumers, patients, et cetera, give us a couple examples of the kinds of things we're talking about with large companies getting into or further into actual provision of medical services. What we're seeing is some really large players, some healthcare companies, some not, uh, making significant moves, mostly through acquisition, but not all to get into the primary care space, which is really the gateway to health care. If you're in primary care, you can direct care, which I think is really what they're after. In this case, uh, we've got CVS that's buying Signify Health for about $8 billion in picking up a bunch of home health care uh, infrastructure. <clears throat> and then we also, not long ago, saw Amazon buy one medical. Walgreens is building a couple of hundred clinics adjacent to their retail pharmacies, uh, all with the same goal to get a to get some market share around primary care. Okay, a lot of different aspects of this to think about. I, I think the most important thing that I want your take on is what do you think the impact of this stuff is likely to be on the healthcare consuming public in terms of cost of care and quality of care? Right. The, those are the big questions. And this industry is built on inefficiency in lots of, in lots of ways. Or uh, another way you could look at it is to say that as we see consolidation, it hasn't historically delivered better value to consumers. Hospitals are an example of that. When you have a large hospital system go into a more rural area and buy up the small hospitals and incorporate them into their system, costs, you go back to that area a year later, costs are 7 8 9% higher than they were. Hmm. So uh, when, that's my fear. And if you look at Amazon, which is one of the ones we were just talking about, and what they did around uh, pharma pharmaceuticals, with Amazon Pharmacy, it has not lowered costs in any way for consumers. I think they saw an opportunity to, you know, grow the Amazon flywheel, add some more revenue to Amazon, but it, and and perhaps convenience, and there's value in that. But it hasn't uh, disrupted the industry in any any way significantly. That's my concern here: is that you'll have uh, this consolidation, and that the real uh, goal of that consolidation will be to direct care as opposed to create efficiencies. I just, I'm, I'm a living example of this. I went, my son broke his arm recently. I have five kids and he broke his arm in a, away from home. So we went to the closest ER. The only referral they would make was to an orthopedic practice that was affiliated right there with them, which of course we weren't going to use. So we had to navigate the system and, and kind of sort that out and get with a, a different ortho group near where we live. That's that I think is really the business here. Yeah. And my concern is that you'll have folks that will go into a uh, or get a primary care visit virtually or otherwise and then they will kind of just assume okay I should get my prescription at Walgreens next door. And maybe that makes sense, maybe it's convenient, but maybe it isn't the most cost effective thing for them to do or they won't question it when they get a referral mm -hmm. to a specialist that's within that same uh within the same kind of vertically integrated hierarchy of healthcare. Uh, that That's the things I think we need to watch out for and make sure consumers are aware of. You still have control over your own care, and you should be a smart consumer. We're talking with Paul Siegert, managing partner at PCS Advisors, or a big healthcare consulting firm. Um, their website is pcsadvisors.com. Uh, let me follow up on something you said there, and, and this is sort of tangential, but as a as a free market capitalist, I always struggle when I have an inclination that government should do something. Uh, mm -hmm. But one of the things that you said reminds me, we have a situation here, and I'm not going to name the group, but there is a very large medical group here, one of the dominant medical group players in the Denver metro area. 
that uh, punishes their doctors if their doctors refer to outside their system. Now, that's not really known right. to the public. It's not known to the patients. I just happen to know this for some reasons that I don't need to get into right now. Mm -hmm. um, but they are forced to refer within their own network, even if they know that, let's say, there's a better specialist somewhere else. Do right. you think that this is... Uh, and I don't know where you are as far as how libertarian you are or anything like that. But do, do you think that in the interest of protecting patients, there's a legitimate role for government action in saying that medical groups must allow referrals outside of their own groups? Or, you know, the market is the market. And if you don't like that, then, you know, get your insurance somewhere else. Well, I do think it's important that we allow doctors to be doctors in our system, the business side of our system. And I'm a, I'm a free market supporter, but I actually would would propose we don't have a free market in healthcare if you're That's allowing, sure. <laughs> if you're creating that kind of control. Yeah. And you look back, so I, so my short answer is yes. And I'll give a little bit, just a little more detail around that. You look at what's happened to primary care in our country in the last couple of decades. It's been under, uh, it's, it's been on the decline. It's hard to be an independent practitioner in primary care anymore. Uh, they've made it very difficult and they've mostly been purchased up by hospitals and they are, uh, I know they don't like me to say it, but they've been kind of, and they don't like, to live it, but they've been somewhat turned into the salespeople for those larger health systems that have purchased them, and they're and they're just they're there to funnel people to specialties where real money gets made. That's my concern with this whole trend: is is are we simply going to watch continue to watch this shortage of primary care doctors grow? I mean, we could be behind by fifty five thousand primary care physicians by twenty thirty three. Uh, is this going to help solve it? I think there's certainly a place for virtual medicine and all that, but we do need some common sense uh, boundaries that really do encourage a free market to form. It's the same thing with the transparency rules that just about all hospitals don't follow. Right, and I, I had a guest today. on the show recently uh, about that. I, I, uh, I wish I didn't share your pessimism, but I do, that these giant firms getting in uh, to further into healthcare are, are really not going to be significantly pro competitive forces, increasing quality and reducing cost. I don't think that's going to happen in a significant way. Got about one minute left. And related to this stuff, I wonder if you could comment on Mark Cuban's pharmacy Definitely. and whether that is doing what he says he wants it to do and is having the kind of pro consumer effect you and I would both like to see. Yeah, I wrote an article on this and, and and looked into it pretty deeply. I think it is one of the few things that is that is actually disruptive that's occurring right now in healthcare in this country. What he's done is say, I'm not going to take insurance. That's a very, very powerful thing to say. If you take insurance and you're running a pharmacy in this country, you're not able to determine your own fair cash price for those drugs. It's literally dictated to you by the whole insurance payment model and the pharmacy benefit managers that are involved. So you could have a, a, a an inflated cash price to make an insurance price look good. And mm -hmm. that happens every day all across this country. So what he's done by saying, hey, it's, it's cost plus this transparent markup plus a dispensing fee and a few bucks to ship it, that may work out. People should look because it may be that it's cheaper for that particular prescription. But in, in the my big overall thought on it is that it actually has the potential to be disruptive, and it has Mark Cuban's name on it, which makes it even more likely. There are others who've done this in the past, but not with that kind of ability to scale and, and market it. Yeah, folks, I, I have no interest, no financial interest in any way in anything that Mark Cuban has ever done. Um, but I think this is interesting. And if you want to go look for it, it's called Mark Cuban Cost Plus Drug Company. If you look up Mark Cuban Pharmacy, I'm sure you'll find it. It's very, very interesting. Paul Siegert, managing partner of PCS Advisors, their website, PCSAdvisors.com. Thanks for the conversation, Paul. That was excellent. We'll do it again. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. You too.